In this video, we're going to go ahead and cover section 6.3, Vectors in the Plane. Um, this is still part of Unit 6, Additional Topics in Trigonometry. And for those of you who have been not liking the trig so much, you'll be happy to know that vectors, they do deal with them a little bit, at least in this part. Um, but for the most part, this section is going to be pretty simple. Okay, so let's, let's begin. Um, we do have um, some things you need to have in your foldable at this point. We're looking at tab number five, okay, tab five, vectors and magnitude. And basically it's everything on the top, okay? So what is a vector? Well, it's kind of like a, a directed line segment. Um, you can also write it as this notation here, kind of like your, whatever the vector is named after. So V in this case with a directional arrow on top. In our textbook and in many textbooks, they tend to do it with a bold letter. So I'm going to try to bold the vectors as much as I can. Um, but if not, I'll just mention that this is a vector, OK? And it's basically a quantity that has both magnitude. Uh, we use R for magnitude, um, which is kind of like the size or the, just the, the length of that piece, and direction, which we measure with you know, R theta in, in degrees, OK? Two ways to describe that we're going to be seeing today are the component form and the magnitude direction form. Get that a little bit better there. Um, the component form is going to have kind of like these two sideways. They, they don't, they almost look like um, inequality symbols, but they're not. They're actually a little bit wider. And we have basically the distance of x, the x component, which we will call v sub subscript x, and the direction of I'm sorry, the direction, the distance of, of y, so like the, the segment of y. And I have a picture here to kind of show you what I mean by this. Okay, so we have, if we had a vector v, kind of like this, well, v, of, v sub x would be this one, v subscript y would be the y component. Okay, so kind of like a right triangle, the, the x and the y that go with it. And we can also determine these using these, these two, these pieces right here, using the magnitude times cosine of theta, for x and the magnitude times sine of theta. And that comes directly from our SOHCAHTOA that we did a while back, OK? For the magnitude, we have um, these other forms here. Uh, actually, you know what? We'll talk about this when we get to the examples. So let's go ahead and let's just jump right into it, OK? We have, in the beginning, two directed line segments that have the same magnitude and direction, uh, direction are equivalent. So we're just going to have, we have, I have an example here. It's already done for us. Um, that just shows equivalence. So here's what the picture kind of looks like. Okay, we have this, um, these two vectors. Okay, we have a vector u and a vector v, where u starts at 0, 0, ends at 3, 1. Um, vector v starts at 2, 2, ends at 5, 3, and they're just, you know, each one has its own name, u and v. And you'll notice that they're both pointing in the same direction, so they do have the same direction, okay, and for the magnitude, all we're going to do is we're going to basically find the distance of that piece. So using the distance formula, here is the solution for vector u. You will notice that I have some notations here. So this is kind of like what we might have seen in geometry, and this is the notation we're going to be using in this class. This is like the magnitude of pq, which is just the length of that piece. So to find the length of that piece, we get the x's. We say, let's take this x, which is 3, and then subtract the other one, which is 0. So 3 minus 0, and then we square it. Do the same with the y's. So 1 minus 0, square it, add them, and then we get our magnitude, or the length of vector u. Basically, it's just the distance formula, OK? We do the same thing with vector v. And that's right here. So you'll notice that I did the same notations um, and I labeled that these, this is what we call magnitude, these two like kind of like they almost look like absolute values, but there's two on each side. And we did the same thing. We got the, the points for, for uh, vector V between R and S and we subtracted. So five minus two and then three minus two, we squared them and we got the same exact thing. So this means that the magnitude, the length of each vector is the same and the direction is pointing the same. So therefore, these two are going to be considered equivalent. OK, they're equivalent vectors. Let's look at what else we have here. And I think this is just kind of what I said here more officially. Since both RS and PQ, so RS is vector V, PQ is vector U, 
have the same magnitude and pointed in the same direction, then vectors you and are equivalent. Okay. All right. So then let's refer to tab two, uh, five for vectors, component form, etc. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit here. Um, another example, and I think this one we have to do. Yeah, we have to do this one. So this one says to find the component form and magnitude of the vector v that has the initial point negative two, three and terminal point negative seven, nine. Um, to kind of save a little bit on time here, I went ahead and graphed that right away. And it's, I know it's kind of small, but if you do have graph paper, this would be a great unit to use it for. I do not, so we are just winging it, okay? Which is totally fine also. Okay, so we have our initial point. That means the first point right here is at negative two, three. Terminal point means the one at the end, so negative seven, nine. So you'll notice we have these two things right here, okay? So what is component form? Um, if we go back to our foldable here, um, component form is going to be basically, it looks kind of like this. It has those two little sideways, like, you know, symbols. And it's the distance from the x, the x, that's our vx term. And then the y is the distance of the y's. That's going to be our y term, okay? so. We're going to do that right here. We're going to find our v of x. Let me go up just a little bit here now that you have the picture. We're going to find vx, okay, and we're going to find vy. How are we going to do that? Well, we're just going to find the distance between this point and this point. So we could use the distance formula. You could say, well, let me get the the number, so negative seven minus the negative two, okay, which would give us negative seven plus two, which is just negative five, okay. And then we do the same for the y. So in other words, this distance right here is going to be negative five. And we do consider, I know what we say distances are not negative, um, this isn't exactly a distance. It's what we call the magnitude of this. It's going, it's going to represent part of the magnitude for us where direction is important. So we do have to consider it's negative because this one is actually pointing to the left. Okay, so not the distance, but the X, I'm sorry, the horizontal component of the magnitude. Okay, and then the Y is going to be the other one. So we have nine minus uh, three, which is just six, okay? So it looks like when we do this in our component form, we have it looking something like this. You have like these two little kind of um, boomerang looking things. And we put V of X in the first spot and V of Y in the second spot, which means that my answer for this one is going to be, at least so far, okay, is going to be negative five, comma six. Okay, and this represents the component form that we wanted. So this is the component form. I guess I can put that over here. But we want that and we want the magnitude. So for the magnitude, we're going to do the other part of the formula. Okay, so we'll notice that for uh, magnitude, you have this kind of formula here. So you do need the components to be able to plug them into this. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the magnitude. We're gonna go ahead and use R for magnitude. So R is equal to, and I'm just copying the formula at this point. We have these symbols here, which means magnitude, okay. And that is going to be equal to the square root of vx squared, so this guy squared, plus the other one squared. So you'll notice that even though the components, we got one that was negative, once we plug it into our, our formula for magnitude, you do get a positive answer because you're going you're gonna to square that, right? So we have negative five squared plus, oh, I'll get my pen here, plus six squared, which is just going to give us square root of 25 plus 36, which is the square root of 61. 
and this would represent our magnitude. So the length of this uh, vector is the square root of 61. If we break it down to component form, that kind of gives a, a little bit more about the direction that this is going in, okay? So yeah, that is, that's it for this example. Let's go ahead and move on. We have quite a few examples for this one. But the good news is a lot of it I did when I went ahead and uh, re did it before, just so it wouldn't take too long. Um, go ahead and copy. We have some stuff up here, some properties that are kind of important. Um, this is vector addition, square multiplication. Basically, if we have, and I guess I can kind of go one thing at a time. If we have a vector u and a vector v broken down to their components, we can add them and multiply. And we can add them and we can do scalar multiplication, is what I should say. So if you add them, what happens is we take the first components and we put those together. So u1 and v1 get added and then u2 and v2 get added. They just kind of match up um, and that's considered the sum. If we are multiplying them by a scalar multiple of something, let's call it k, then what happens is we are just basically taking that number, whatever it is, and kind of distributing it. So k times vector u would be the same as k times the components, which is just k times the first one and then k times the second one. So pretty, pretty basic stuff. A um, couple of notes here, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later. But uh, the negative of v, okay, if we have a negative vector, what happens is we put basically multiply it times negative one because that's that's what negative means. And these, the components will be negative. And this kind of helps us with uh, finding a difference of u and v. So you'll notice that for the difference when we're subtracting, that minus is the same as saying plus negative vector v, right? When we put this in component form, it's basically just kind of translated. The first terms are subtracted, the second terms are subtracted in that order, okay? I have a few pictures here. Um, we're not gonna talk too, too much about the graphs, but I do wanna show just a few of them. Um, so you can kind of see how these are shown geometrically, okay? So if we have a vector addition, u plus v, this is what it looks like. You will have, and I guess I should have put this one first, so let's, let's look at that one first. You will have something of this sort where you have some vector u, some vector v, and if we're trying to add them, what you're gonna do is visualize this, kind of take this u and just add it to it. So you're kind of just adding in the same direction because they're both pointing to the right. So therefore you just kind of get this u and slide them up and continue in the right direction. So it looks like this. So my, my v vector used to be on the bottom. So I moved it up and now we have this kind of like this, uh, well, almost like a triangle, right? So we have, we start from U, we go up, we add V, so we continue going, you know, to the right and slightly up. And this combination is U plus V. So you'll notice U plus V and U. And I kind of put the dotted lines here just to show you that these are the same uh, lengths over here. Okay. If you're subtracting, it's a little more, it's a little more confusing. Um, but this is what it looks like if you are subtracting. So I have a note here. Okay. I have to represent u minus v geometrically, we have to use directed line segments with the same initial point because you're subtracting, so you kind of want to go backwards, right? So we have u right here and we have v right here. Let's pretend that these ones are not there yet. So pretend you don't see that on this side, okay? Um, we have, so they both have the same initial point since we are subtracting, basically we want the segment between them. So from their terminal points and this segment right here, represents u minus v. If you draw it uh, geometrically where v is negative, meaning it's the opposite way, well, that's where this one comes into play. It's the same length, but now it's negative because it's going to the left. You can kind of see the arrow over right here going the other way, but you'll notice it's the same length as v. Okay, we just kind of slid it over in the opposite direction because we went from u and then we're subtracting v this way. So this is also the same as saying u plus negative v, we connect the points and you'll notice that they are the same distance, okay? So it's just a geometrical uh, view of what we are doing here. Let's go ahead and look at some more examples. Okay, so we have example number three. Again, this one is done for us. This one's not too difficult. Um, it's just, it's, you know, I'm trying to save some time here because there's about seven examples in this video. So we have let A equal to U, vector U and vector V, 
uh, yeah, sorry, let me rephrase that. Let u equal to one, four, and b equal to three, two. I don't know where I got a from, probably from here. Um, so we have these two vectors and we're going to be finding basically these things right here. We're gonna find u plus b, u minus d, two u minus three b. And it's very, very similar to just basic um, algebra and arithmetic where we kind of distribute a lot, yeah? So u plus v is gonna look like this. We take our, our u component, there it is, our v, our v component form and put it right here. We are going to add all of the x parts. So let me see if I can do this kind of backwards here. So this guy and this guy, one and three, get kind of put together here. Okay, you'll notice that. And that just gives us the four right here. And then we do the same with our second component. So our y component, we have four, and then we have two, and then four plus two is six, okay? And that's the answer, That's we're done with that one. Uh, U minus V, pretty similar, um, but now we're subtracting. So same deal, we are taking our one and our three and we're subtracting it. So one minus three, is negative two. Remember when we're doing the component form, this is just the individual X and Y form. So we can't have a negative on that part, okay? Do the same thing for Y. So we have four minus two, four minus two, which is just two. And that is our answer right there, okay? Last but not least, we do have a little bit of scalar multiplication. Um, for the scalar multiplication, you want to Basically, put that number, whatever is in front, in front of your vector first. So we have two times my u and then th negative three times my v. And it works pretty similar. Um, you kind of you can kind of see what just happened here. We just distributed two times one is two, two times four is eight. Okay. Negative three times three is going to, oh, well, actually, they, they let, we left the minus. So three times three is nine, three times two is six because we're going step by step. And then at this point, we can go ahead and do what we did in the previous examples where you have our x components. So 2 minus 9, then the y components. So 8 minus 6 to give us an answer of negative 7, 2. And that's it. That is it for that one. Pretty basic stuff. Okay. So more stuff to copy. To copy because vectors are kind of new. Yes. We kind of go over a lot of things. Um, for this one, you do not have to write down all the properties. I just kind of put them there because I know there's a few students who really like to say commutative property and associative property. So that's for you. You know who you are. Um, we are basically just identifying um, three different vectors and some scalars, C and D, just arbitrary numbers, and just letting you know that these are also applicable. So for example, U plus V is the same as V plus U. You can do that. You're allowed to do that. If you add a zero, it's the same thing. If you're multiplying two scalars times a times a vector, it's the same as swapping them. You can do you know, the order doesn't really matter. Um, this is the distributive property. This one is just um, multiplying a, a uh, the magnitude of it by a number. So if you have something like this, you want to pull the scalar out. Okay, the scalar um, multiplication here. We also have that order doesn't matter here where you have some kind of parentheses going on. You can swap the parentheses. It won't change the value. We have, if you're adding the same thing to itself, but the negative side of it, that's gonna give you zero. It's like saying one plus negative one is zero, okay? Over here, more distributive property. And then we have our identity property, which says one times this is still that same thing. And then the zero property, which means zero times anything is zero, okay? so. A few properties, um, there's the commutative one for those of you who are interested. And yeah, that's about it. So we're gonna use some of these properties in the next example. And again, this is just really basic stuff. Uh, this one I am gonna do with you guys because it should not take too long, okay? We have let u equal to four, negative one, that's the component form, and b equals three, two, also the component form. We're gonna find the magnitude of each scalar multiple, okay? So I have these three different forms here, these three different um, little mini problems, I guess. And uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to kind of pull that three out. Remember that according to what I have up here, when you do pull it out, you are going to leave it positive. You're going to take the absolute value. Okay. So this times my u, and that would be the same as the absolute value of three times 
my component form of u is going to be 4, negative 1, okay, which is going to be the same as 3 times, uh, remember that the magnitude is defined as the square root of these two guys uh, squared and then summed together. So remember, this is bx, and, or I guess you could say ux because we're using u, and this one is going to be uy, okay? So we're going to do 4 squared plus negative 1 squared, which is 3 times, let's see, 4 squared is 16. That's a big 3, okay, not a root. So 16 plus 1, which would be 3 times the square root of 17. And if you're not sure where I'm getting this from, it's from your foldable, guys. It's, it is right, let me show you. It is right here, okay? So remember that the magnitude is equal to this right here. That's where I'm getting it from. All right, so yeah, that's, that's the answer for that one. Next one, we're gonna go ahead and take that negative two out. So negative two um, absolute value, which is gonna make it positive at some point, times V. So let's just make the two positive already because why not? And then we have our V in this case is three, two. So three, two which would be two times the square root of three squared plus two squared, which is two times three squared is nine, four squared is four. So it's two square root of 13. Done with that, okay? Last but not least, we have the five over here times the magnitude of V, which we really kind of found V, it's, it's the square root of 13, but we can go through it again. So that's going to be 5 times my v is 3, 2, magnitude of that. So I have my 5, remember you're just kind of carrying the scalar in front, times the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is the same thing I had up here, but now we just have a 5 instead. So we're looking at 5 times 9 plus 4, which is 5 times square root of 13. And that's it. That's we're done with this one. Okay. Hopefully, like I said, this is a lot nicer and easier than all that crazy trigonometry stuff. Okay. But don't worry, we'll get there. We'll get some, we'll put some trig in here. All right. Example number five. This one is done for us, and so is example six, because like I said, length of this video would be ridiculously long otherwise. Um, let me go ahead and kind of cover the solution first. We can go over it. We have let u be a vector with an initial point negative 2, 6 and a terminal point negative 8, 3. Write u as a linear combination of the standard unit vectors i and j. So I haven't talked about that yet. Let me bring back our foldable here. Okay. You have at the bottom underneath all this, you have this thing that says the unit vectors. So the unit vectors are i and j. Okay. And they basically have a length of one unit. Um, the i points in the x direction and the j points in the y direction. So that's kind of what that's the most important part. Um, what happens is if we have a component, so let's say 3, negative 6, if we're going to write them in this form, we're going to just basically put an i in front of the 3 and a j behind the negative 6. And we write it in as a linear combination like this. Okay, so really, really easy stuff. Um, let's just do an example so you can see how it goes. We have u is equal to, oh, actually, let me go, go up a little bit. I drew the picture first. Let me show you the picture because you kind of need that. So here's the picture that goes with um, the problem that we're looking at here. We have our two points. So these are the points, initial point negative 2, 6, terminal point negative 8, 3. So you have those points kind of graphed here. There's the first point that's initial, and then here's the terminal point at the end. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find u of x, so the distance between my x's and then u of y, the distance between the y's, which I do here on this first line. Okay. So what I did is I took my x's, I said negative 8 minus negative 2, so this one minus that one, and then my y's are going to be, well, the other one. So 3 minus 6. Okay, and I just kind of broke it down. Negative 8 minus negative 2 is the same as negative 8 plus 2. 
Okay, you'll notice that I kind of color coded slightly underneath. Um, three minus six, there it is again. Simplify this, we get negative six, negative three. And this right here is basically our component form, what we're used to. If you want to write it as a linear combination, though, um, we just, you know, take them out, put the i and the j. So negative 6i plus negative 3j, that looks a little weird. So let's take out that plus and just make it a minus. And that is it. Okay. That's it for that one. Again, basic stuff, guys. Example number six. We have some vector operations with i and j. And again, there's a solution. Let me cover it briefly. Um, we have u equals negative 3i8. I'm sorry, negative 3i plus 8j. And b equals 2i minus j. Find 2u minus 3v. So we don't have to kind of, we don't have to go back and put this in component form and then change it. We're just going to basically multiply as we see it. So the solution for this goes like this. We take those vectors and we plug everything in. So we have two times u, so two times all of this minus three times v, so three times all of that. Distribute like you would normally a any kind of expression like this. So we get negative 6i, 16j, negative 6i, plus 3j because of the two negatives. Combine like terms, and there's the answer. So negative 6i, negative 6i give me negative 12i, 16j, and plus 3j are 19j. And that would be your linear combination um, in terms of i and j. If you wanted to do component form, you could also do this. So component form would be basically taking the two numbers and then putting them inside our little symbols there, okay? And that's it, we're almost done. Let's look at the last example, okay? The last example um, has to do with a little bit of trig, so you know, don't freak out, it's nothing too crazy. It's um, they're dealing with direction angles. So if we have a, a unit vector, okay, what well, the unit vector means that you know this part is just one, such that the theta, the angle, is measure, measured from the positive x-axis counterclockwise. So you're thinking if we have something kind of going this way. Then we have the following, that u is going to be equal to basically our point. So the components of u are, are basically this x and this y. But we know from previous units that when we have something like this in the unit circle, because that's a unit, right? that the x component is the same as cosine of theta or the adjacent side, and y is the same as the sine of theta, also known as the opposite side of theta, okay? So we can rewrite this x in terms of cosine theta and the y in terms of sine theta. Or if you wanna do linear combination, you would just you know put the i here, put the j here. If we're looking for the angle, okay, well, since we're dealing with opposite and adjacent, you should remember that opposite over adjacent is tangent, okay? And if we're looking for an angle, we basically take the inverse of tangent. So that's where this direction angle is coming from. Um, it says to refer to tab five. I'm gonna show it just real briefly. You do have this in your vector part. It's right here. The theta is equal to this. And, you know, so it's the same thing we already have. Uh, one important thing to know is that when you are doing this right here, this operation, remember that when we're doing um, the triangles, we consider them to be positive. So even if you have a negative angle, or not, I'm sorry, a negative angle, um, if it's in one of the quadrants where the components are negative, when you do this part right here, you want to do the pot, you want to make these positive. Otherwise, you won't get, um, you'll get an invalid answer. Uh, last thing on this, we just have the notation that the magnitude of u is just one because it's the unit vector. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do this example. I don't think I solved this one, so we're gonna solve it together. We have two parts for this one. Find the direction angle of each vector. Okay, so I, the pictures were not given that I did kind of give you. Originally, you're looking at this 3i plus 3j. So what I did is I just kind of drew, you know, quadrant one. They're both positive, so I know that it's gonna be in quadrant one. If you're not sure what I mean by quadrant one, pretend this is our unit circle. Okay, so something like that, right? And basically this piece right here is three and this piece was also three. So you'll notice I went ahead and just kind of labeled, this is like our three I, this is our three J, and that point right there is just, well, three, three, okay? So theta is gonna be measured from here, the X axis, 
up to here. Okay, so how would we find that? Well, we can kind of make construct a triangle here, right? And I'm going to just basically use my formula. Theta is equal to tangent inverse Vy over Vx, where Vx is basically, oh, I'm sorry, Ux. I keep saying V, but this one's a U, so we'll use U. So U of X is going to be this piece right here. And U of Y is going to be this piece, uh, sorry, this piece right here. So let's just plug it in. We have theta is going to be equal to the inverse of tangent times, I'm just using this right here, um, opposite over adjacent, right? Or Vy, so Vy is three, Vx is three. That, that should be one that we know how to find, but we can go through it. Three over three is just one. Remember that this is the same thing as saying tangent of something, uh, let's call it, uh, I don't wanna call it theta, I'll call it alpha, is equal to one. So where is tangent equal to one? If you remember your unit circle, okay, we have tangent is equal to one, basically at square root of two over two, I'm sorry, the, the coordinates square root of two over two and two in quadrant one. So I believe this is pi over four or 45 degrees. Remember for these ones, we do want the degree. So for in this case, I guess I could have used theta. Uh, theta is going to be 45 degrees. And that's what we're looking for. So this angle right here, from here to here, is 45 degrees. Okay, that's it. That's all we got to do. Let's look at the next one, and that'll be it for this video. Hopefully it was not too, too long, considering that we've done seven examples. Okay, let's look at the second example now. We have V equals 3i minus 4j, just like the one before. I went ahead and drew the picture for us to help us out a little bit. And that is right here. Okay, we have that my horizontal piece right here, so remember this is kind of like our Vx, is going to be three, so there's my point three, and then the vertical one, this remember this one right here is like our Vy, would be negative four, okay, because it's minus four j. Okay, so the point is three, negative four, and in this case, remember that we're going counterclockwise from zero, so the angle is actually going to be basically all of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find theta prime, which is you know the reference angle. This is the one I can actually make a triangle with, right? And then I'm whatever, whatever I find, I'm gonna subtract it from 360 to give me the one that I'm looking for, if that makes any sense, okay? So let's just jump right into it. We have that our, let me get all that on the same view here. We have that our theta is going to be equal to tangent of inverse, okay, of v at, Vy over Vx. Remember, let me, well, let me write it out so we can see exactly what's going on here. All right, so remember what I mentioned earlier that when we're looking for inverses uh, with this trig stuff here, we, we're pretending like everything is positive because, well, it's a triangle, right? So we're going to use positive 4 over 3. And we're going to see what that gives us really quickly. Okay, so this is what I'm getting. Tangent inverse of 4 over 3 is 53.13 degrees, about, okay? And that represents the angle that I found here on this piece right here. So just to kind of, again, kind of show you what I'm going to do here, the angle we want is this one, the one around. So if this piece right here is 53.13, to find theta, and I guess I should have put theta prime here because that's that's what I put here, theta prime. To find theta, we're going to do 360 minus this one. Why 360? Well, because there are 360 degrees in a circle, yeah? So we're just gonna subtract that and that is going to give us the following. 306.87 degrees. And this would be our direction angle that we're looking for, okay? So that's it, guys. That's it for this video. Hopefully it wasn't too, nothing too crazy. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.